Welcome back to the Sunday Footy Show. We're going to do the deep dive a little bit differently this year and focus on one club throughout the deep dive for each week. And here's the Collingwood Football Club, the reigning premiers where we'll start. 2,649 matches. They've had an unbelievable history. 45 grand final, 16 flags. Scotty Pendlebury played the most games and still going. We'll make 400 this year. And Gordon Coventry, 1,299 goals. And can't talk about Collingwood without talking about this man, Jock McHale, eight-time premiership coach, two-time premiership player, 714 games coach and 250 games played. A phenomenal record. And, uh, Damo, uh, let's now focus on the Brownlow medalists. Yeah, we will, uh, Lordo. They've got some uh, famous names. Len Thompson, TJ, a man that you uh, would interview regularly, uh, 1972. And, and still in the eyes of some people, one of the great exponents of the the uh, craft of rucking and one of the really good guys uh, involved. And then you had Peter Moore, who was an extraordinary player, won a Brownlow medal lotto at Collingwood and then won another one at the Melbourne Footy Club and was every bit the prototype of the player we're trying to create today. Nathan Buckley obviously shared a Brownlow in 2003 with Adam Goods and Mark Rusciuto. We move on to Dane Swan, who uh, was also very close in a couple of other Brownlows and could have easily won three. Ended up winning one, and that was uh, in the year of 2011. And they nearly won another one last year, Lordo, with uh, Nick Dacos. Had he not got injured late in the year, would have, uh, would have added his name to that list. Hugh, uh, highlight reels everywhere. And uh, let's take a look at some of the best goals and marks in the history of the Collingwood Football Club. Peter Dacos, we could have featured him I don't know, 20 times, but that was one of the best goals we've ever seen in 1990 qualifying final. Leon Davis, he was a terrific footballer, wasn't he? Because yep. he did it on the ground and he did it on the air. This is 2008 against mm. Fremantle. This is goal of the year. He was so smooth and covered the mm. ground beautifully. Nice. As I said, could sit on heads and do things like that. Um, Dennis Banks, oh. mark of the year. Look at that. We have another look at that. We got, we got... <laughs> oh, we don't. But um, there's also... And that was Mark of the Year, Andrew Cracker. Cracker. as well. Yeah. yeah, that was a beautiful mark. And then I did love Sav and Anthony just kicking absolute bombs. Drop punt. It, it's just so <laughs> watchable, that, isn't it? Like, they're just an amazing uh, ability to go long. Oh, look at that. <laughs> just whack the power. <laughs> So let's talk about some big grand final moments. Take you back to 1990. Doug Barwick kicks the last goal of the game. And Collingwood, for the first time in 32 years, win the grand final. There he is, Doug Barwick. Good player he was, hard running. And the celebrations went on. There's Darren Mullane back in 1990. Took him a little bit of time again to get to 2010 after that. And in this famous smother, Rui didn't know where he was coming from. And that is as good as it gets from Heath Shaw. Set the and tone well, for the day, didn't Well it? called by Dennis Cometti. There's Dids as well. And then uh, last year, there's some big moments last year. Pendlebury was superb in the last quarter, but Jordan Ngoi, when the big moments were there, this is a big moment as well. Brisbane have come there two points up and be able to bang that from 49 and put them back in front, and they weren't headed from there. So some big Collingwood moments in grand finals. Hey, TJ, for those who don't love Collingwood, yeah. I thought... For those people who are watching there, we need some heartbreak as well. So you're going to take us through some heartbreak for <laughs> right. Collingwood as well. So you thought you'd get to the only Collingwood yeah, exactly supporter right. on the panel. <laughs> right, OK then. Um, yeah, well, I, I'm, well, you only need to think back to 1970, right? A crowd of about 120,000 at the MCG and Collingwood, an unassailable lead at half-time. But then Ron Barassi, a masterstroke at the time, brought on that man, the late Teddy Hopkins, who uh, just went bang and uh, ruined it for Collingwood. As that man did, Wayne Harms, this is still very, very controversial as to whether that ball was out. Now, if Eddie Maguire is watching at the moment, he'll be screaming, it was out, it was out. But history will show it wasn't. Was Eddie will also be... <laughs> this was a point. Uh, this was a goal, sorry. Uh, but it was deemed a point, And uh, that added to yet more heartache. And I think, uh, you know, sort of scientific and technological evidence since has shown that there uh, has been an, uh, an error there. Well, that's what we're And was there a free anyway. kick to Maynard before that sheed mark? Absolutely there was, yes. So when you talk about heartbreak, uh, it's just personified by some of the decisions that could have actually gone rightfully Collingwood's way. No doubt, TJ. And, and this is one a hard one, looking at some of the great players of Collingwood. Can only fit in five. And we'll start with Darren Mullane. Like, I had Tony Shaw and Eddie Maguire help me with some of these names, but didn't play a heap of football. Darren Mullane, unfortunately, you know, tragically losing Darren. 147 games, but... Just so significant for Collingwood, uh, winning a Copeland as well. Here's Peter McKenna, TJ. Yeah, 838 games. Goal, sorry, from 180 games. Nathan Buckley, just a lethal right foot. You know, unfortunately, didn't get the ultimate Nathan Buckley, but was such a brilliant player for the Magpies. This guy, as mercurial as they come, and how lucky are we to have his two sons doing exactly the same thing for the black and white at Collingwood. There's Peter Dacos, uh, two best and fairest Pies team of the century. 
And I just wonder where this guy will sit at the end of it all. Oh, I that, think he's there now. Yeah, is he already the greatest magpie? Oh, well, be, so. yeah. certainly in the in the modern era, you've got to say. Yeah. And I think, obviously, what he did in the last 30 minutes of that grand final last year, TJ, I think it elevates it too. It's, yeah. it's fresh, obviously. Yeah. Um, do you, as a Collingwood expert, expect the name Nick Dacos to be in this conversation as soon as even four or five years? Oh, no, I think Scott Pendlebury will hold the mantle for some and time. Too. But I wasn't around when Bobby Rose played. Yeah. And they tell me you know, that he was just an outstanding player. So I love this segment. Mm. I love the fact you're isolating various clubs, but uh, it's just great because there will be debate at home yeah. now as we speak. Like, you didn't have Mickey McGuan's goal in there, no. you know, the great running goal, which is probably one of the greatest that Collingwood's yeah. ever seen. I love the segment.